Hey, we're back. A part two now of Gray Hack. Um, I think we were on single player. Um, I'm going to keep playing single player, by the way. Um, I got uh, some comments on the last video. Uh, number one, I had a request for a part two, so here you go on that one. Um, but I also got a comment here from Gray Hack Gaming. Um, let's see. They confirmed that the showing my own email in the reply is a bug, so that's good to know. It wasn't just uh, just me. <laughs> um, it does seem to be a bug in the game, so keeping that in mind now. Um, what else do we have? Oh, apparently tab autocomplete does work, but it's case sensitive, and you can control, um, you can copy paste with keyboard hotkeys, but it uses the Linux hotkeys of um, control shift. C and V instead of the Windows hotkeys of Control C, Control V. Um, exploit report EXE they say is for forcing lib patch updates. Okay, so that's uh, not what I assumed it was, but it, it's good to know that that's what that's for. So we'll get to that. Uh, and I am going to keep playing in the single player version because that's where I started. But uh, apparently, according to Grey Hat Gaming, the multiplayer world is persistent and, in their estimation, more interesting because it has player-created content and so on. But because, you know, I'm making videos anyway, uh, I don't want the multiplayer interaction, at least for these videos. I'm, I'm just evaluating the thing. That said, I, I might jump into multiplayer after a couple of parts just to, you know, check it out and, uh, and, and all that. So uh, let's see if we can get back to where we were. I don't see a continue button. I see only a play. So, <clears throat> and let's see if we still have what we. Okay, I did reconnect to that. Uh, uh, was it Gillen Br? Yeah, Gillen Br um, Wi-Fi signal. So that's where we were last time. Let me check my notes. Oh, I must have forgot to save them or something. Um, let's see. I think it was a dog or so, I think. I don't know. We might have to redo that one. All right, let's go back to the mail clients. And okay, all, yep, all of this is as it was before. So we are where we left off. Okay. Come on. Come on. And that in there and the IP. Okay. Okay. It says it was copied to the clipboard, but there we go. Okay. Um now where did I leave off? I think I did do an end map uh last time, but let's try that again. All right, yep, to, uh, port 2.2 for SSH, that's fine. See, it has a local IP in addition to this public IP here. Um, and let's get, let's see, was it the manual that had the... Yeah. Basic commands. Network commands. Uh, okay, so Airmon, Airplay, Aircrack, IW list. That's how we got to the Wi-Fi network, doing VR. <clears throat> let's save it this time to be sure oh i guess i did save it last time i just didn't open it up okay well we'll just over oh wait no 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 no. i don't want to overwrite it because um i may not have the right hey look at that i actually didn't remember the password i think that's correct All right. All right. So, um, oh, now what were we doing here? Um, in order to access the private server, we need to find the password. Uh, so there's an encrypted password on the in the client configuration uh, file of the target's computer. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so, um, one last tip I have from Grey Hat Gaming from their comment is to check the whois command. So, let's see what we got here. 
Provides public information about the IP address, such as the domain name and information about the network administrator. Okay, well, that is what who is does. So let's try it. Uh, gdon.org administrative contact is Reese. Oh, okay. I get it. I get it now. So um, knowing the bug was a bug, um, now I can try social engineering again. And okay, keyboard commands, okay, they're not working there. What the heck? Okay, weirdly, all right, so weirdly, control shift CV for copy and paste on the clipboard, and then control C, control V for the mail clients. See, if I go control shift V to paste, nothing. Control V here is paste. I come down here. Okay, so Control C, Control V. It, it's inconsistent. It works sometimes and it doesn't work other times. Yeah, C, Control V, Control C doesn't work there. Uh, it's it's you know it's it's fine. It's a a fairly minor thing, and it's not all that unrealistic. From I switch between operating systems a lot, Windows and different different flavors of Linux all the time. So, um. You know, my my brain and uh, hotkeys. Um, are constantly at odds. Um, all right, so <clears throat> now that I know who the administrator is, I can fill in these. All right. Reese, all right, and I work for you at Acorn. All right. Um, all right. Now let's send that fish. Oh, I do not work there. Um, where's the email? Um, <laughs> oh, Gdon. Actually, I wonder if I can go there. Oh, that's the map. Can I go there and get... No, I can't. I was going to say, if I can go there and I can get additional information, um, do a little mini mini recon, mini OSINT challenge, that'd be cool. Um, all right, let's try it. I don't know if we can do it again. Let's try it. Nice. So this time we got some feedback, though. He says he doesn't work there, so now I at least know that I'm on the right track. We just have the wrong... Um... G Don. I just have the wrong uh, text there. So let's try again. Oops, and I need email address. Um, same message. I do not work there. Okay. Um, Doesn't say in the email. <clears throat> so it's not Paycorm. It's not GDON. I think. Isn't a DNC, isn't that. Um, isn't that. Uh, I think that was one of the mail providers that we saw before. Maybe I can actually search for it. No, okay. Okay. I think that's where my address is. No, and mine was Arden. Okay. Well, then I guess let's see if we can... <laughs> this is uh, excellent practice, by the way, to send the exact same phishing email the exact same way with just various little... Uh, Oops, that's not the right name. Rees. Uh, nope, not Ian. Ian C. 
This is weird. I did not work. There. Okay. Where? Oh, where? Um. Do I need the? No, I I shouldn't need the. I shouldn't have to. Like, who talks like that? Um. All right, let's delete these. <clears throat> Same message, I didn't work there. So where do you work, Mr. Anabor, if that is your real name? So I wonder if it's like, all right, we're going to, th we're going to throw some more at him. Use. I'm gonna try the work case. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna throw it on there. That nobody talks like that, but but we'll try it. Oops. Weird. I do not work there. Okay, so it's still not right. So we got the right. We got the right fish. Got the right admin name. Company. Let's try. Hey, I'm just gonna try it lowercase, I guess. Because the last time I capitalized, I think the P and C. No. Okay. Maybe we should try a different fish. Maybe we don't have the company name, and we should try a fish with that doesn't require it. Um, yeah, let's try this one. Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong. Oh, okay. Herper. Okay. Now that we have that, now we can SSH perhaps. Uh, and it is, I'm going to work at uh, Ripper. Incorrect user password. Uh, let's see. It is case sensitive. Okay, there we go. All right, your first remote connection before consuming it's important that you know some details about remote connections. Okay, remote connections can only be made through the terminal. In addition to the SSH command, you will discover other programs that will also allow you to connect remotely to a machine. When connected to a machine, you can navigate through its file system and run programs as if it were your machine. Okay, provided you have the necessary permissions. Note that you can launch visual programs through the terminal, even connect to a remote machine. For example, although you can use the SCP command to upload and download files from a remote machine, you can also do so using the UI to do this launch file explorer from a uh, uh, program from the terminal where you connected. So I will then move this out of the way. So then I cannot, yeah, I don't have any remote targets there. Okay. Um, from the terminal. Okay, so then we can do that. But uh, can we just browse around here? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Oh, you want me to actually do it? Okay. Consider it done. As you can see, you are browsing through the file system of the remote machine. Yes, I do see that. You can copy and paste files between machines using File Explorer either by dragging icons. Okay. File Explorer, you can launch any program and command that is on the remote machine, okay? It is recommended that you copy this ScanLAN program on the remote machine and run it. ScanLAN is a powerful program that shows you the network configuration. Uh, let's see, do I personally have ScanLAN myself? Did I actually 
grab that user. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, it is especially useful to solve the missions and know uh, which is the victim's machine according to its local address. Oh, I should probably have also grabbed this. So I probably need it. <clears throat> um, keep in mind that when you scan a public address with Nmap, it may not show you all the computers on the LAN. Well, I guess it depends on the parameters you're passing it, but uh, yeah, it's e in either case. It's weird how some of these are highlighted, like net work configure red. Um, anyways. Um, to access these computers, you'll first have to access some other machine. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm uh, getting ahead of myself and I got lost here. Okay, let's start here. Keep in mind that when you scan a public address with the map, it may not show you how the computers connect to land. It just services, since some computers will not have the port configured on the router and therefore will not be visible from the outside. Yes. Well, I mean, yes. Okay. But to have the, I mean, there's a lot of different reasons why, uh, you know, a, an external end map scan wouldn't show certain things. And I mean, certainly... Not every asset on the inside of a network is going to be publicly accessible, um, obviously, but that may be that may be configured on the router or maybe an internal networking uh, equipment, or it could even be uh, something host host based. Right. So, so for example, if you have a host based firewall or IDS IPS, um, a a hips or nips as we say, um, or you might simply the way nmap works um, by default unless you unless you send parameters to not do this is nmap will not scan let's say that we throw a range of ips at it so let's say that we do uh let's say we do a scan in this case for for 9923756 and then we say 0/24 to grab the whole 56 subnet um it won't automatically scan uh, every IP in that range, it will first send a ping. And if it doesn't receive a reply from the ping, it assumes that the asset is unreachable and so skips it and will not perform any additional scans on it. So if you have a host configured simply to just ignore ICMP, um, then it won't send a packet back and you know it's not going to scan it then. So that's another reason why you may not get it back if you do a broad scan like that. Among other various reasons, as I said. Um, all right, so to access these computers, you'll first have to access some other machine as a port open to the outside or gain a shell access to the router and from there get to the machine on the LAN. Okay, you can see more details about scan LAN in the manual. It's a good time to show you how to avoid being caught by the authorities. Well, I mean, I should say so. Let's see if we can run scan LAN. All right, we are going to have to copy it over. So, bleh, bleh. And oh my goodness, this is something. Um, I, I tell you, I wish um, some of the tools that I used for this were this nice. Um, I mean, I guess it's not not unlike a vulnerability scanner. Some of them can do data flows um, or you know logical logical uh, charts like this. Um, so this is where I am. It does not have a host name. Let's see, device details. Wait, that's not me. Oh, it is. Okay. Uh, we got a couple of, so we have a lower level networking device here, a switch. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. So this is a wireless access point broadcasting a ray bar. ESSID. Um, okay, here we have another device here with nothing connected to it. That looks like another access point as long as the uh, icons are consistent. And they do seem to be because these would be... Oh, these are hubs. Okay. And then here would you have a switch? Yes. Okay, so that's a switch. These are access points. Or uh, actually, this must be a router because... 
wait, does it say router? Did I miss that? Yes, it does. Okay. <clears throat> so the networking configurations, uh, uh, it's, it's not, okay. So the networking configuration is a bit strange looking because it's considering wireless access points to be routers. We don't have, uh, APs personally, which is, I mean, it, it's perfectly fine. That's a, um, I wouldn't say an unusual representation. It's just, you know, it threw me off a little bit. Um, so basically you have wireless routers as access points here, which is fine. You can configure them that way. Um, my own home network, for example, has, of course, the feed in to the home and that's connected to a wireless router and that wireless router, because my, uh, my, I cannot get a Wi-Fi signal to propagate through my house for various reasons I won't get into right now. So what I have actually had to do is to run cable to, uh, other parts of the house and then I got other wireless routers, um, just off the shelf commercial wireless routers that I instead configured to, um, I just turned, well, I won't get into how I did it because that's not really important right now, but suffice to say, I just have them configured to be access points. So they all go back to the router and they all have one, one DHCP and, uh, it just extends the range out and then it, it pushes a wireless signal out to those other parts of the house. So. Um, why was I talking about this? Oh, it, okay. We were just looking at scan, scan land. Uh, okay. Let's minimize that for now and come back to that. I don't see scan. Oh, where's, oh, here we go. Wait, can you see that in OBS? Yeah, you can. Okay. I did not even notice that we have a taskbar down here. So, all right. I am going to close this. I'm going to leave that open. All right. Yes. Show me how to avoid being caught by the authorities, please. When you access a remote computer without authorization, it is very likely that you will attract the attention of the system administrator. Uh, if it finds the machine that started the hacking, it will inform the authorities. Depending on the type of network you have accessed, administrators can be more or less permissive. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to do this one. I was going to read the whole thing and then break it down, but... Uh, we're already we're already getting to the point here okay so when you access a remote computer without authorization it is very likely that you will attract the attention of the system administrator uh yes and no depends a lot on the target and a lot uh well mostly on the target to be honest with you so not not all organizations are going to have the same um incident response and uh, incident monitoring capabilities um it is entirely possible, and we have seen even with very large, well-prepared organizations that blind spots can result in sometimes months or even years of infiltration without detection. Um, so whether it's very likely that you will attract the attention of a system administrator depends on a lot of different factors that, of course, the attacker may or may not already be aware of, depending on the nature of the attacker and the nature of the attack. So, um, but um, this is a game. I got to keep that in mind. So for gameplay purposes, I can see why um, they want a more interactive ad adversarial sort of situation. So, um, you know, I, I'm willing to accept the fact that there are system administrators out there um, at every organization that, that may detect me. That's fine. If it finds the machine that started the hacking, it will inform the authorities. Um, so most of the time, um, <laughs> the authorities may be notified. The authorities are not going to respond, uh, not right away. Anyway, when you, uh, when you're a cybersecurity professional in charge of incident response at an organization, contacting authorities and gathering evidence along the way is part of the process, but the authorities are not going to come in and save the day. You are responsible for shutting down that attack for, you know, um, remediating and mitigating, uh, all of those fall under private sector stuff, right? Um, you can take that, you can hand it over to the authorities and the authorities can continue an investigation after that. But to be honest with you, generally speaking, most of the time, nothing comes of it simply because there's so many cyber attacks that are out there. And unless there's, um, unless there is a criminal prosecutorial interest in pursuing the case, generally speaking, these are going to be civil matters, which means that the authorities may be involved, but still, the, um, the majority of, uh, of prosecution, at least here in the United States will, uh, take place under civil court, which means that, uh, you will still need to gather evidence, but the evidence that's gathered by private investigators or by cybersecurity professionals in the course of their incident response duties are, are perfectly fine, which is why part of what I do as a professor is try to teach cybersecurity professionals, forensic processes and cybersecurity strategies. Well, I mean, the whole thing inside out, really. 
um, to make sure that uh, these attacks can be stopped, but then also that there is enough information moving forward to prevent another attack, but also, if necessary, to pursue um, legal avenues afterwards. Um, depending on the type of network you have accessed, administrators can be more or less permissive. That, that, I mean, that's absolutely true, right? I mean, if I have um, proper network segmentation and I have... Um, security zones set up and my zone four is insulated and isolated and it's there's several layers of abstraction between our zone four and let's say our zone one our byod network um i mean i see stuff on the byod network all the time you don't need to have credentials to to log into a public wi-fi that's offered as community service um, if i see something on that network that i don't like like for example torrenting or something i will kick them off the network um, but I'm also, that's going to be about it, right? Unless I see a repeat offender or something, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go crazy, um, because I see somebody is using Tor or something on the public network, you know, a good administrator usually finds suspicious activity where others do not see it or simply ignore it. I mean, that's hundred percent true. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would, I would hope there's a lot more good than bad out there, but of course I have been a working cybersecurity professional for a while. And I know that that's not always true. In any case, it is highly recommended that you delete your tracks once you have finished an intrusion and all computers keep a log of the log, keep a log of the log in var system.log. I mean, yeah, that's not going to be the only log though, right? I mean, this is a remote connection, so there's going to be a firewall log. There might be an IDS IPS log, depending on what we're doing. You know, there's going to be logging for various different services. So like, for example, there's going to be IIS logs. There's going to be FTP transaction logs. There's going to be, S you know, there's going to be logs all over the place. Um, but again, we're gamifying this to, to a certain extent. So we, we, we have to, we have to, um, uh, the, uh, the developers of the game have to have an adequate challenge that is, um, that is, uh, um, met with, an appropriate amount of, of resistance and avenue to success. I just noticed time is flying here. Look at the minutes are flying by like every 10 seconds or so. Um, in it, system events are registered, such as incoming or outgoing connections, deletion of files. So in this case, system var or the var system.log is uh, a confluence of uh, many different logs, it seems. So incoming and outgoing connections is going to be your, your firewall log. Um, even if you don't have the firewall on is it's not blocking anything. It's always a really good idea in terms of um, having information available to, to do incident response and forensic work to turn on the firewall into audit mode so it doesn't block anything, but it is recording incoming and outgoing connections. Deletion of files are system transaction logs, which may or may not be present. On NTFS file systems, you have what's known as the Mac B time, and there's a Mac B register in some operating systems that, that keeps logs, transaction logs here. Um, this might also be like, for example, a running transaction log that you might see in like a database or something like that. You can also do system auditing, uh, with certain operating systems, including Linux and windows, um, where all transactions can be kept, um, for, for this kind of thing. So this is just kind of a mixture of different logs and it says, et cetera. So I don't know what else it might be in there. I wonder if I can, um, okay. Okay, I don't know why I wouldn't take me there before, but okay. What the hell? There we go. Um, can't open it's well, it's not a binary file, it's a log file, so mm -hmm. it will be. Um, let's see. Okay, there's no file command. Um, so the can't open, I'm not surprised by because, it, you know, there's a good chance it would be locked, but it shouldn't say binary file, but that's fine. Oh, I see, because, I, all right, they want me to use a, a thing here. Okay. Uh, so, okay, we just did that. Oh, that's why, that's why CD didn't work. I'm getting my, uh, I'm getting my... Um, 
operating systems screwed up again and I used the wrong slash. That's my fault. All right, so this is what that looks like. Um, is that for real? I can't actually. Uh huh. So we can just tr straight up see our public IP here. Public IP. Okay. Um. Yep. That's us for sure. All right. It's important to keep in mind that the deletion of the records is only useful when a passive trace occurs. There are two types of traces an administrator can perform: a an active trace and a passive trace. So, system administrators, like any other worker, have a work schedule. Is it usually advisable to access remote machines at times when the administrator is not working? Programs like Admin Monitor notify you in an automated way. Okay, this is getting kind of weird here. So Active Trace and Passive Trace, the real world analogs there would be a passive trace might be something like um, alerting that has been set up. So we can have, um, on all of our security appliances, we can build out, gen well, not, not all because some are better than others, but generally speaking, um, security appliances will have the ability to do alerting based on rule sets. So for example, you can have like the IDS, IPS, um, an intrusion prevention system will block when it, a, 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 an attack matches a signature. Um, and IDS is just a detection system, so it doesn't actually stop anything and the, it's the deployment. Well, I, I, hold on. <laughs> we don't need to talk about IDS, IPS here. This is going to get super long, but, um, point is, is that in any case, when a, uh, an alert is triggered when a rule is triggered, I should say it can send out an alert. And so that should go to, uh, for example, a SOC, a security operation center. So somebody can analyze it in some smaller shops. It will go directly to a security analyst or even to somebody who's maybe uh, an information security officer. Um, probably not a CISO level. If you're a CISO and you're still handling alerts, then um, your organization really needs some more security resources. Um, but, uh, something like that might be considered a passive trace where you have security appliances that are doing monitoring and blocking, and then they send alerts out to somebody who's monitoring those. And hopefully somebody sees it in time to do something about it. An active trace has a harder analog. Um, something like that might be, um, I guess that might be after a passive alert is triggered and then somebody is actively looking into the situation and seeing, for example, connections as they're occurring in real time instead of waiting for alerts to respond to them. So, yeah. Um, now, as for admin monitor, which is a program apparently that lets you know when an administrator is present and the approximate time remaining until an active trace reaches you, um, that's seems to be purely fiction. I don't see, I mean, yes, administrators will have work schedules like any, any other. And if I'm stuck in a two hour meeting and an alert comes in, I will obviously be slower to respond to that because I'm in a meeting and I'm not checking for alerts. I would, you know, I mean, it's bad enough that I got to be in the meeting to begin with, but then everyone gets mad at me because I'm constantly checking my phone because alerts keep coming in. So, uh, yeah, work schedules change. Uh, generally speaking, if you're going to be the kind of person who's doing incident response for cybersecurity, it's going to be a 24-7, 365 kind of gig. Um, hopefully you have enough people on the team to spread the misery out a little bit, but there kind of is no such thing as downtime. That said, if it's three in the morning and I'm asleep, I'm slower to respond because I'm sleeping. Um, but still. Uh, but there's no program that lets people know uh, where I am. I suppose if I was going to, to reach a little bit and find a real world analog, maybe, uh, some kind of program that monitors either like instant messaging platforms like teams or Skype or, or discord, um, and, or outlook mail client or something like that, um, to see whether my status is idle or away or do not disturb or available. I'm really reaching here, though. Um, it's likely recommended that you take a look at the manual in the trace system section to know more depth how the traces work and the different ways to avoid them. For the moment, it is enough that you know this way to eliminate your trace. Okay. It's important that you remove any traces that may incriminate you in an unauthorized connection. 
in the current version of the game, you just have to delete an, an, any entry in the file that is uh, whether that is either shell obtained or file deleted along with your IP address. If the admin monitor program warns you that an admin, so let's let's run this admin monitor. Okay. Apparently, I needed to keep this up. I don't. I don't know if I have. I do not have. I do not have admin monitoring. Um, Was that one of the things that I could have downloaded but didn't? <laughs> Doesn't look like it. I don't see it. So, nope, no, it's not there. Uh, okay, maybe that's something I got to get later. Um, do not delete the entire log since inevitably when you disconnect from the machine, you will create an entry in the log with your disconnection, creating the file if you had deleted it. If an administrator sees a log file with only a disconnect entry, he will suspect and start the trace against you. Um, yeah, I mean, that's true. Uh, I mean, reading log files is, is something of a necessary skill in the field. Um, and if I do see a disconnect without a connect, then, yeah, I'm going to think, wow, okay, where did that connection come from? Um, that said, if I see a connection from a, an unfamiliar IP address, depending on, of course, the log, I mean, if it's if it's an in, if it's a web server or something, then obviously I'm not going to think anything of that because that's what that the web server is supposed to do. But if I see like a an administrator's workstation or something with a weird connection, I'm I'm still going to be suspicious. Obviously. Anyway, let's uh, let's do what we came to do. Eh? Um, we'll come back to the log, um, and where was the config file? Uh, well, first let's go back here and let's take a look at, uh, at this. Anabor, you're watching the news. Yes, the Sentinel thing. Oh my God, was it really them that they confirmed it? I'm freaking out. It seems like they were. Uh, robbed a bank, leaving unsettled clues, trying to blame Sentinel and such. The point is, in a matter of a few days, the members of the robbery were handed over to the police by real members of Sentinel. The same week being incarcerated, they all died this the cyber curse. I was surprised that you were so surprised. Everyone knows that this is not the first time they have killed. The hacking the military drones and killing all the soldiers at the base. I don't think is the solution. I'm trying to make much sense of what they do. So we have um, Sentinel is uh, apparently some kind of hacker collective. What is this new OS part? I hate the I hate the display here. Um, PDF. As far as a patch was released, to fix everything. It was a oh here we go mail config. Job done. But what is this? A bank account or something, perhaps? No secrets. Okay, so let's close this. Uh, we are going to need to do and take that. Can't save. Permission denied. Okay. Um, need to. Oh. 
Oh. Huh. Well then. Okay, can't do that then. Hmm. Well, that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, I mean, I'm not surprised. Hmm. Well, let's go back here. Uh, we need to run Decipher. Oops. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Decipher. Oops. Can't find. Do I need the full string here? Why would I need that? Huh. Wait, decipher can't find. What is right there? Oh. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, I need to be a separate file. If I had known that, then I would have. Hey, now that's doing that work here. I cannot delete the log unless I have privs, and I don't, and I don't know who I am. I'm oh, I'm Animor. Duh. Um. Okay, can't list. Can't. Who am I? Um. Uh, and I can't cat, can I? No, I can't cat. Uh, password found Warren C. All right, come on. All right. Um, ba -ba -ba, you have done well. If you want to work, you may visit this web. Okay. I shall visit that web. I, I cannot. Let's see. Should I focus? I, I No. Let's see. So normally with privilege escalation, what I would do is I would poke around for a while, but I don't have, I, I'm torn between continuing to do this and, or to continue to try to work on the system log, um, and just moving on. I feel like, I feel like I should just move on. Um, and the reason that I feel that way is because I don't see, I'm, I'm torn because the game said it wouldn't hold my hand, but at the same time, I feel like I would be given, 
I was given instruction to delete the log. I was told not to delete all of it. Um, can I even? Um, permission denied. And I don't have proofs. Um, so I'm going to leave it. Um, all right, let's go to that there and see what's up. Hopefully that decision doesn't come back to bite me, but we'll see. Look in my personal store, buy what you want. I will not ask questions. If any of the users report this site to the police, I will be forced to make public a list of all the users of the site. Well, that, that's not very nice. Oh, there's admin monitor. In hack shops, there are usually jobs available. In addition to the tools and jobs, some hackers publish their exploits on these pages. The main services and programs of a computer depend on the libraries they've installed. For example, an SSA server has the lib SSH, so uh, a library installed the system. Okay, here we go. So yeah, this is this was going to be my my essentially my my next step to um, getting privs to delete the log file. I just hadn't been given this instruction yet, so I wasn't sure if I was supposed to leave it or what. Um, okay. As these vulnerabilities are exploited, library developers will discover and patch them. Due to the nature of the software deployment development, library updates will bring new errors and vulnerabilities that may okay, the version is safer than others. Okay, yep, that's fairly true. Search for exploits in the store. You have to select the library version you want to hack after a recent search. This will appear, okay. <laughs> Local and remote use. Remote exploits are those that can be run from any computer to attack any remote machine. This type of vulnerability is reserved for libraries or programs that have services open to the outside, such as, okay, yes, that's true. Um, I have yet to see one of these hacking simulators take advantage of the CVE system. I think that that would be a good inclusion into the game. Um, I can see why developers avoid it, because maybe it's a bit much, like it seems a bit complicated, although, I mean, it's a really simple system, but it's, I understand it seems, you know, complicated to people just coming coming to the topic but um but yeah cve systems uh classification systems already will classify exploits based on um well a number of different factors but remote or local um is, is certainly one of those and the first exploit in storage detailed uh so you know it, going to a site like this uh for an exploit is you know not so i we didn't connect to any privacy enhancing technologies we're not using a vpn we're not using Tor. Uh, we're, you know, this is a pseudo dark website of some kind. Although you can find exploit the, exploits like this on the clearnet, that's not a problem really. I guess so much. Um, I would say it's a bad idea to host on the clearnet, but you know, who, who am I to judge? Um, but uh, normally, what we would do in a case like this is um, we wouldn't have to go to some dark website for something like this. You would go to a dark website if you want to purchase like novel malware or something or even non-novel malware. Um, but for exploits like this, I mean, they're packaged exploits you can find just about anywhere, right? We use, uh, we can even use platforms like Metasploit to, um, to grab them out of repositories and then use them. Um, it's for security research purposes. It's not necessarily just, it's not illegal. It's not illegal to have it. It's not illegal to do it. It's illegal to use them in a way that is legal, but it's not illegal to use them in a way that's not illegal. Um, so it, we usually don't have to jump through this many hoops. What we will do is when we find, for example, SSH was running on this, so we find a vulnerable service, uh, as they say here, SSH, H uh, sorry, SSH, FTP, SMTP, SQL, um, and of course, HTTP, HTTPS, uh, the most common publicly available services like this will we'll go out and we'll, we'll look for known vulnerabilities and then look for a package that matches that vulnerability, uh, which isn't all that dissimilar from the process that we actually are doing here. It's just different enough that it's um, noticeable. Um, in the description of the exploit in the store, it's detailed what type of permissions are obtained. Okay, yeah, well, I mean, they're, they're almost all going to be, again, CVEs also classify exploits or vulnerabilities, I should say, classify vulnerabilities based on 
uh, the level of permissions required to execute them and the um, compromise thereafter. But usually um, the privileges that are gained are going to be the result of the... Um, so for example, if you have a vulnerability that allows the arbitrary execution of code under a system context, well, that's really bad uh, because then you have system level privileges. Uh, but if it compromises a web server, then the amount of privileges that you have are going to be commiserate with the uh, account, the service account running the web service, right? So it may not be that bad or it may be disastrous depending on, uh, on all those factors. So, uh, for example, if executing an exploit gives you access to a terminal on the victim's computer, depending on the type of exploit, you'll have rootcast or common user access to the machine. The exploits of local use can only be executed from the victim's machine, since they use vulnerabilities in the libraries, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this means in order to successfully run a local exploit, you first need to have gained access, at least as a guest. Okay, yes. Uh, use exploit, but yeah, a privilege escalation. Uh, okay, got it. Um, some vulnerabilities require that specific behaviors occur in the program in order to exploit it. Okay. When you select an exploit to buy it, you have the option to download the source code or the compiled version if you want to download the download the exploit source code to review and compile it yourself with the code editor. Check the source code conversion box. If instead you want to download the exploit ready to be used in terminal, okay, so but is there going to be a difference? It's not telling. I mean, if if there's a compiled version is is getting the source code just like for my own edification and so that i can have extra hacker cred or you know is there a danger to using the pre-compiled version like is somebody going to sneak in some some malware you know or is are they going to give me something that's junk you know i don't know it's not saying in the real in the real world yes that would be a possibility um you know when you're when you're <laughs> you're dealing with uh, stuff that's kind of on the fringe of legality uh when you're doing security research i mean sometimes you find some stuff that's not nice uh libraries often have more hidden vulnerabilities than those found in exploits published in hack shops these vulnerabilities can be scanned with the scanlib tool um to program your own exploits okay that's cool if you are interested in programming check the scripting section of the manual it's all for night okay well we're going to want to get admin monitor oh it's 15 bucks how much money do i have Bank account unknown. Decipher I already have. That's free. Scanlib, $45. Scan router, sniffer. Um, exploits. The SSH version 1.0. Oh. oh. Get access to a shell and remote use. Take advantage of a vulnerable in the SSH service to inject a new password to a registered user. Grant access to the, well, that's what we want. $65. Um, let's reconnect to that. Oh my goodness, it remembers. The, well, everything that was in the SSH session apparently is here in the buffer for the there we go alright alright I mean, at this point, we wouldn't be looking for a vulnerability in SSH anymore. We have an SSH session open. We would be looking in it for a vulnerability somewhere else. Um, run. No. Um, okay, I have a very limited command, uh, command set here. Um, Okay. Just want to see what services are running or what sessions are open or something, but I can't. Um, do these get more expensive as they go? No, they're just I can't. I can't sort by price here. Um, 
and listing it does not actually show more at a time it shows less okay um okay we don't want remote use we have an ssh so this is the one i want oh can i can i just get it file not found on the server you must register a bank account in order to buy okay um then i guess let's do can i uh no library analysis tool okay so this is definitely not the kind of stuff that you would see on the clear net this shouldn't be hosted here the client wants to modify the information of a police or i mean at least not i mean maybe um you know <laughs> Maybe behind a, uh, a secure login or something. I mean, stuff happens on the clear net all the time. I mean, human trafficking happens out on the open on Craigslist. So, um, but I didn't have to log in to get to the site. So, they shouldn't be. Um, how do I connect a. Uh, excuse me. How do I connect a. Bank accounts. Let's register a bank. Maybe I have to do a job first, huh? Set. Accept. going on here oh okay there we go got an email um maybe i need to bank net test i'm definitely not using a bank with a url that's net test praxa flack urger let's go praxa uh register not a hacker well i mean the same secure password we use for everything because it's secure password one my account number is i can't cannot highlight why why not uh, maybe i don't need to remember it well in case i do i should probably show you guys excuse me info Secure, do not share. Password. Password one. <laughs> uh, this is how it's done. I'm not going to say I haven't seen worse in my time. Uh, okay, I don't need to remember it. Oh my god, look at this. I have 12... Oh, this is this is very nice. Um, now I think I can go and do this then. Um, do I need to make accounts? I I have one now. Can I? Yeah, I'm gonna go back to this. Close this. How can I do multiple tabs? Nope. Okay. A lot. Make account unknown. Okay. Well, I have one now. Let me buy. Oh, okay. It did work. Okay. And uh, uh. what? Oh, okay. 
I thought this was a local exploit. Oh, remote use. My bad. Um... Nope. Nope. This is the one I this is the one I wanted. Nope, remote use. wonder if I can decipher that, by the way, um, this bank account information. Oh. Okay. Okay. I will come back to you. Oh, come on. And while that's running, let's close this and go back to this. Uh, 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 get access to a shell. No, that's not what we're looking for. Looking for a privilege escalation. All of these are remote use. I need a local exploit. Although, I mean, these are all SSH. Like I said, we wouldn't normally be doing that anyway. Hey, we do have a password. Oops. Can I go back? I just, I want a new... Another tab is what I want. Um, are all banks connected? Are they all the same? Uh, the the oh my goodness! I can't. I don't want to take his money. That's kind of sad. Um, but I will. Oh, crap. Oh, okay. A good thing I wrote it down. Um, boom. I'm just going to go ahead and leave all those logs there, then. I'm just going to... I'm not going to launder this money. I'm going to go directly from his account to my account, and we're not going to worry about that. Because I'm worried about that. I should be laundering this money. But okay. Um, where was I now? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm pretty sure that even though we really shouldn't be looking for a vulnerability in SSH, that that is what we're supposed to be doing. Um, simply on account of it's just what seems to be correct here, I guess. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete that. Um,
Ah, what did I miss? I wonder. Um, you normally wouldn't need a server for reverse shell connections, although that does work um, and is typically how uh, malware will work. With a command and control server accepting reverse shell connections. Um, Okay, um, let me open up another terminal and let's uh, let's, um, let's try this from this way. Damn it. Nope. Oh, that's why. I pressed the wrong key. Uh, and what else did it need? Port. Can't find. Okay, so meta exploit is the meta exploit um, analog here. Hmm. Okay, I, I'm I'm already at over an hour here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here for part two, uh, and with part three we will either continue uh, to delete this log file, um, or we'll move on to the next mission, whichever whichever seems more fun at the time. So, uh, take care. Hope you enjoyed part two. I am gonna be back for part three uh, after now. I'm at like what an hour and a half or two hours of playing this game um still a thumbs up for me this is uh it's not obviously a perfect analog to you know actual security work or, or pen testing uh but i tell you it's it's pretty close um it's it's definitely one of those things where it's clearly gamified and simplified to a certain extent but number one it is not simplified to the point where it's no longer challenging which is one of the biggest problems with hacking simulator games that i have encountered after the dozen or so that i've taken a look at thus far is that's almost always the problem is that it's hacking themed but there's no challenge because it's just like doing really easy stuff with hacker like flavor to it you know like you're you're running these tools and you're clicking buttons and stuff but you're really all you're doing is kind of clicking the mouse and watching things progress you're not really doing anything this is one of the few hacking games where it feels like i'm doing something um and it's not holding my hand which i love uh because that's another pitfall of the hacking simulators i've come across is that they they just make it too easy um and they just say you know do this go here do that type this and so on um, I, I feel like I have just the right amount of assistance with the uh, messages that come up. Um, so it has the, the, the hacking analog. It still has the challenge of pen testing. It is not overly simplified. Um, and um, the tools and such that I'm, I'm seeing when I read something, even if I'm like, well, that's not 100% true, I'm still like, this is 80 or 90% true. Like if I see something, I know what they're talking about, like what it would actually be. Um, so, and that's pretty rare. So this, this so far after two hours, still a thumbs up for me, definitely coming back for a part three. Um, and also this is making its way into being one of the few hacking games that I would actually recommend, uh, to somebody who's interested in hacking or to my students who want a good hacking themed game and so far i have like maybe two or three out of the dozen or so i've tried that i would say these are pretty good you should check these ones out and this one's working its way into that list too which would just be fantastic so i will see you back for part three all right take care